Art has an incredible power. It's soft power. It's not the hard power that we think of in terms of brute force, military strength, but it is a really important factor in diplomacy. It's a very important factor in community understanding um, because it's also nonverbal and people, it's open to interpretation. People can see different things in it that sometimes language on in of itself creates very hard edged rhetoric. Um, I can give you one example. After the Second World War, people in this country were not great fans of Japan. And quite understandably, it had been a very, very bitter war. But the Japanese government understood and it had long relationships with the United States before the Second World War, and they wanted to re repair those relationships. They sent an art exhibition in the 1950s that toured the United States. People found the art so very exciting that even President Eisenhower, who was a very important figure in World War II, he came down, it was one a very, very popular show. And from then on, then it was so much easier for those, those sorts of dialogues to happen. People began to see each other as individuals again. People could understand that aspirations were very similar. It was not the language that you read in newspapers. It was a very common language. And it didn't have to be expressed in words. You could just come in and understand that instinctively. I think in communities too, having different kinds of art, I think is very critical. Um, and I think that museums nowadays are very, very conscious of the need for diversity, that it's not one group's worth of art that is better than another. It's not one, um, it's not established artists that everyone recognizes as necessarily having more authority than others. Although sometimes, because artists, a lot of people like them, there is something to be said about them. But I think museums now are working very carefully to say everyone has a buy-in to a museum. There is something here for everyone. And it's, you know, it, it has not only been in terms of different ethnic groups and different communities, it's also been this year coming on 2020, um, we're looking at the year of women. Women have not been represented in museums. Many times there've been very well-known women artists, very active in communities, but if they've made their way into museums, they sort of been put in the basements. And now museums are all saying, wait a minute, there've been a lot of important female artists. We just haven't given them the kind of spotlight they deserve. So I think museums now are becoming more inclusive places. I think it will encourage others to make more artwork now that they can see that they can get that kind of recognition. So I think we'll see a very different kind of museum in, in the future. Um, but I also feel like sometimes I work with Japanese art um, not most people in the United States have never really studied Japanese art. It's not something they know. But one thing that someone said to me very early in my career, he said, you know, the wonderful thing about Japanese art is no one knows anything about it. So there are no expectations. Whereas you could go into, you know, you could go into a classical gallery or you could go into a European painting gallery and people feel like, oh my goodness, I have to know all these things. Otherwise I can't look at the art. And he said, the one thing about Japanese art is people don't, as a rule, know anything about the art. So it's sort of neutral. Um, they, you can come in and say you like it. He said, your job, though, is so that they can learn something when they're there. But you don't have these preconceived ideas of it's not for me because no one knows it. And I do hope that 50 years from now, people will know it better. But right now, I think we're in a unique position to sort of make a bridge for those people trying to learn of different ways of seeing.